Chapter 6. Stanley took a shower, if you could call it that, ate dinner, if you could call it that, and went to bed, if you could call his smelly and scratchy cot a bed. Because of the scarcity of water, each camper was only allowed a four minute shower. It took Stanley nearly that long to get used to the cold water. There was no knob for hot water. He kept stepping into, then jumping back from the spray until the water shut off automatically. He never managed to use his bar of soap, which was just as well because he wouldn't have had time to rinse off the suds. Dinner was some kind of stewed meat and vegetables. The meat was brown and the vegetables had once been green. Everything tasted pretty much the same. He ate it all and used his slice of white bread to mop up the juice. Stanley had never been one to leave food on his plate, no matter how it tasted. What did you do? One of the campers asked him. At first, Stanley didn't know what he meant. They sent you here for a reason. Oh, he realised. I stole a pair of sneakers. The other boys thought that was funny. Stanley wasn't sure why. Maybe because their crimes were a lot worse than stealing shoes. From a store, were they on someone's feet? Asked Squid. And neither, Stanley answered. They belonged to Clyde Livingston. Nobody believed him. Sweet feet, said X-Ray. Yeah, right. No way, said Squid. Now, as Stanley lay on his cot, he thought it was kind of funny in a way. Nobody had believed him when he said he was innocent. Now, when he said he stole them, nobody believed him either. Clyde Sweet Feet Livingston was a famous baseball player. He'd led the American League in stolen bases over the last three years. He was also the only player in history to ever hit four triples in one game. Stanley had a poster of him hanging on the wall of his bedroom. He used to have the poster anyway. He didn't know where it was now. It had been taken by the police and was used as evidence of his guilt in the courtroom. Clyde Livingston also came to court. In spite of everything, when Stanley found out that Sweetfeet was going to be there, he was actually excited about the prospect of meeting his hero. Clyde Livingston testified that they were his sneakers and that he had donated them to help raise money for the homeless shelter. He said he couldn't imagine what kind of horrible person would steal from homeless children. That was the worst part for Stanley. His hero thought he was a no good, dirty, rotten thief. As Stanley tried to turn over on his cot, he was afraid it was going to collapse under all his weight. He barely fit in it. When he finally managed to roll over on his stomach, the smell was so bad that he had to turn over again and try sleeping on his back. The cot smelled like sour milk. Though it was night, the air was still very warm. Armpit was snoring two cots away. Back at school, a bully named Derek Dunn used to torment Stanley. The teachers never took Stanley's complaints seriously because Derek was so small, so much smaller than Stanley. Some teachers even seemed to find it amusing that a little kid like Derek could pick on someone as big as Stanley. On the day Stanley was arrested, Derek had taken Stanley's notebook and, after a long game of come and get it, finally dropped, dropped it in the toilet in the boys' restroom. By the time Stanley retrieved it, he had missed his bus and had to walk home. It was while he was walking home, carrying his wet notebook, with the prospect of having to copy the ruined pages, that the sneakers fell from the sky. I was walking home and the sneakers fell from the sky, he had told the judge. One hit me on the head. It had hurt too. They hadn't exactly fallen from the sky. He'd just walked out from under a freeway overpass when the shoe hit him on the head. Stanley took it as some kind of sign. His father had been trying to figure out a way to recycle his sneakers and suddenly a pair of sneakers fell on top of him, seemingly out of nowhere like a gift from God. Naturally, he had no way of knowing they belonged to Clyde Livingston. In fact, um, the shoes were anything but sweet. Whoever had worn them had had a bad case of foot odour. Stanley couldn't help but think that there was something special about the shoes and that they would somehow provide the key to his father's invention. It was too much of a coincidence to be a mere accident. Stanley had felt like he was holding Destiny's shoes. He ran. Thinking that now, he wasn't sure why he ran. Maybe he was in a hurry to bring the shoes to his father, or maybe he was trying to run away from his miserable and humiliating day at school. A patrol car pulled, pulled, along him, pulled alongside him. 
policeman asked him why he was running. Then he took the shoes and made a call on his radio. Shortly thereafter, Stanley was arrested. It turned out the sneakers had been stolen from a display at the homeless shelter. That evening, rich people were going to come to the shelter and pay $100 to eat the food that the poor people ate every day for free. Clyde Livingston, who had once lived at the shelter when he was younger, was going to speak and sign autographs. His shoes would be auctioned and it was expected that they would sell for over $5,000. All the money would go to help the homeless. Because of the baseball schedule, Stanley's trial was delayed several months. His parents couldn't afford a lawyer. You don't need a lawyer, his mother had said. Just tell the truth. Stanley told the truth, but perhaps it would have been better if he had lied a little. He could have said he found the shoes in the street. No one, no one believed they fell from the sky. It wasn't destiny, he realised. It was his no good, dirty, rotten, pig stealing great great grandfather. The judge called Stanley's crime despicable. The shoes were valued at over $5,000. It was money that would provide food and shelter for the homeless, and you stole that from them, just so you could have, have a souvenir. The judge said that there was an opening at Camp Green Lake, and he suggested...